Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're bringing the heat. We're gonna make a DIY alcohol burner that also doubles as a lamp or a candle in a pinch. The key materials can all be found at your local hardware store, like a quarter pint canning jar, three of these little compression adapters that are used for plumbing, a couple of empty soup cans, which you're not gonna find at the hardware store, but this flame protector is often used for welding purposes when working on copper piping. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna show you why I made this, what it actually ended up replacing, and the first prototype I made when trying to make a replacement. First thing you need to do is open up your canning jar and mark three holes where we're gonna make some drill spots so that we can put on the compression adapter components. Do make sure to watch throughout the video as I'm throwing in three different add-on features that help with the burner that you're making. The three drill holes you're making are gonna be the size of the smaller threaded end of these brass fittings. Go ahead and put the fittings through and lock them on with the nut on the bottom, then go back and take your protective fabric out and cut three small strips of the fabric. These will serve as our wicks. You can see I jumped the gun here a little bit and started putting the wicks through as I was finishing putting these little fittings on here anyway. But this is all you need to do. I twisted the fabric a little bit and forced it through. If, however, it's a little challenging for you to get that through, just grab a piece of masking tape, wrap it around the fabric, and pinch it down tight. It will then be much easier to get up and through the brass fitting. The key here is that you just barely want to pull that wick up and into that little kind of a bowl area. You want it to sit well below that lip so that you can control the size of the flame much better. If you use tape to get these through, now's a good time to remove it. Then go ahead and spread out that wick a little bit so that it fluffs out and that will help the burn work more effectively. Put the lid of the jar back on and we're going to move on to our first optional add-on feature, making a windscreen. You're gonna see in just a minute why a standard soup can is perfect for this because I just went down a few ridges, cut it loose, drilled holes all the way around the outside, and you can see it fits perfectly right on top of this jar. That makes a great little burner windscreen. Now we're gonna take the top back off and go ahead and fill it with rubbing alcohol. Just for extra safety's sake, I only fill it about halfway full, but then I do go back and put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on the top of each of the wicks to help it start pulling things through. I let it sit for a little bit, and then I go ahead and carefully light all three wicks and get this started. Remember, this is very flammable, so you wanna be careful. Test everything out, make sure it all works really well in a safe environment before you start using it elsewhere. What you're gonna notice is that the flames actually start off a little bit smaller at first, but they do start to build up as the alcohol starts to pull through. So we're gonna let it keep burning and work on our second add-on feature. We're gonna make a larger windscreen to block the entire thing. With a second soup can, you're just gonna remove the bottom and then go ahead and split it down the seam and then open it up in a horseshoe kind of a fashion. Once you've got that set, take the very ends and just bend them out at a 90 degree angle about 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. That will help this stand upright better. You'd be asking yourself at this point, why did I make it to begin with? And this is my original purpose. I needed a better burner for my siphon coffee maker, which is a really cool kind of a sci-fi way to make your coffee in the morning. See, the original burner that came with this coffee maker was smaller and a lot less efficient, and it really produced a lot of soot on the bottom of my coffee maker itself, which is why I needed to try something different. So I built this first prototype burner using much of the same principles. However, there were some problems with this one too. The more I used my new burner, I actually came up with a third add-on feature, which was very nice to have, and that is a snuffer slash cover for my burner. I just cut the end off a small drink can and then actually sanded off the logo and it works perfect for putting out the flames, but also leaving it on top helps to reduce the amount of alcohol evaporation when this is not in use. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.